Welcome back, friends, to a very chilly day on the homestead. We woke up to 17 degrees this morning, and it has snowed over 16 inches in the last 24 hours, so it's stacking up. I'm going to have to get the plow out here in just a minute. You know, Mrs. W, uh, she liked that uh, the last the towel hook that I forged for her so well that she asked me if I could do a matching a toilet paper holder. Uh, and I thought, well, I could give it a try. And I'm a little excited. It kind of had all of the forge and everything out. But I ha what I'm excited about is that there's so I got so many tips in the comments of things that I was doing wrong and things that I can do to make life easier. So I'm going to implement some of those today. And I really appreciate all that, especially from those of you who commented actually have a lot of experience with this. So I was thinking, what could I use to make, uh, to make the toilet paper holder? And I was digging through my old broken tools and I found this old ratchet. And I thought, man, that wouldn't that be cool? It, was, it had just about enough steel in it that I could do that. One thing I don't know is what, do you, what happens to the chrome? Because these are chrome plated. And will that burn off or what happens or will that ruin it? I, I just don't know. But I got to looking at it and it, got, it gets kind of so, so narrow right there at the taper that it's, it's not really gonna work for me because what I need to start with is we're gonna have two pieces. We'll have the two by two square and then we need the, the bent crook piece. Um, and I found this. So this is an old uh, broken ratchet. This was in or, uh, <laughs> half inch drive extension, the little ball bearing DLC stuff and it doesn't work anymore. And I thought that might be the perfect thing. It's the almost exactly the right length. I like the dimension of it. Uh, we'll try it. What will happen with the chrome plating on the outside? I just don't know. Uh, we'll find out. But I want it to be square and obviously this is round. So me being an amateur, this is gonna be a little challenging. I'm gonna have to make this square um, and then put the bend in it and then we'll do that mortise and tendon again. So let's get started. I'll show you, I'll, I'll share with you kind of some of the things that I learned on the comments and we'll just, uh, we'll just come and hang out. What a great day to be out uh, in the shop forging. It was pointed out to me that I was not working, uh, I'm not getting the metal hot enough. And so what I, what I did is I, I've had this fire going for about an hour. I made a really good fire uh, with a lot more wood. I kind of confined everything and I've got a great big, a good uh, hot bed of coals on there. So hopefully we'll heat our stuff uh, a little bit better. Another tip was to preheat the anvil. I, I'd never heard that before, but I thought, boy, there can't be any harm in it. So I've got a big old chunk of steel here that I've been sitting in there. It's red hot. And I thought, well, we'll just lay that on there while we're getting everything ready and doing our layout there and uh, let some of that heat maybe go into the anvil so when I strike on it, it's not pulling, sucking all of the heat out of it. Several of you pointed out that my uh, anvil is in, uh, well, it's an abomination, I think was one person put it. But. Uh, it's in bad shape. I know it is. It's it's the way I got it. I I, I repaired one side, kind of, but uh, it's it's the one I have. It's what I have to work with. So I, of course, you know, everyone would like to have a new anvil, but it's not always an option there. I wish my granddad could have seen this uh, this a forge and been involved in this. He always he loved blacksmithing. When he grew up in Oklahoma, he said there was a blacksmith in town, and that was kind of the place where all the men would go and hang out. You know, because you hang out around there and talk and visit. You know, you can, you can kind of picture that whole thing. He said there was a there was a blacksmith in town, and that's what he did for a living. He made horseshoes and whatever. You know, all the things that, that need doing. He, my granddad said his arms and shoulders looked like the as he well, how did he put that? The hind end of a of a horse. You know, that's how big he. You know, he said he said he was just massive. He'd done it all his life, and he had a he had an anvil in there, a smaller one that was sitting around he'd use for stuff and he he would uh he would grab that by the horn right here it's tapered he'd grab it by the horn and pack it across the shop and put it down as a test of strength and guys would would come and try to do that he said he never remembered anyone doing it you know, or didn't remember how heavy the anvil was but he said it was heavy heavy enough no one else could do it imagine grabbing it by the horn picking it up and carrying it you know something else okay here we go guys see if we can do better than yesterday. Just dawned on me how cool it is to be working this anvil, for example, to working, be working on a, on a tool that has been developed over thousands of years, lifetimes of effort of men, blood, sweat, and tears, and to come up with this shape and design and to be working on that you know to, at this modern age i mean it's just it's a surreal experience it re really is even when you do it poorly uh you, you you can always every time you do it you get a little better you just 
see a little bit of hope. So there's our base. We'll let that uh, cool down there in the ice. I measured it out this morning and for a TP holder, what it looked like you needed was about three inches off the wall uh, and five inches on the return arm. So that's a total of eight inches. So this, uh, this extension here, if we were to cut it uh, right at the flare, right there, and right where it goes down into the square drive, we would have exactly eight inches. So that will work out perfect. So let's, um, I guess the first thing you do is to, we'll heat it and cut, cut off both, both ends. Now what I should have done before that is probably drawn this out into square I can feel that little bit of hammering in my forearms right now. You can imagine that a blacksmith, a full time, would be a hard, uh, after a lifetime of that, would be a hard man. not sure how I'm going to do this um, other than just start smashing here and see. Let's see, what can we do? What can we do with that? First off, we can straighten it out a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to fool with it. Actually, it's just going to make it worse. And it. Uh, well, I don't know. It looks kind of. It's kind of cool. Just straighten it up a little bit, where I. Bent it. Yeah, I think that will work. Actually, oh, it looks—it doesn't look so bad. Okay. I am not happy with the way this is turning out. Uh, couple things. So I didn't give myself enough material. I have to have the five inches there for the roll and I don't know that I have enough on the return arm. And then the second thing that happened is that it made the hole too big. So I tried to draw that out a little bit to give me some length and now the hole is too big. So I'm going to scrap this one. I got another one in the, in the forge. We'll uh, punch a smaller hole and then um, so that that has a nice fit. I, I couldn't look at that the rest of my life. It would bother me. I mean there's there's doing your best and then there's cutting corners and that would be cor cutting corners in my opinion. Punch a new hole here. Oh, got it the first time there. How about that? Make that a little bit bigger. Let's, let's heat that up. 
You just gotta hit it harder, that's all. I'm learning, is that still hot? <laughs> learning from yesterday is, I, uh, I got. To be honest, it's not as I had, uh, not as good as I had hoped, but um, I, did my, I did my best. I learned a lot. A um, couple things I learned. Be nice to have a bigger anvil, a real anvil. Um, this little surface is a little tricky to work on. Um, what else? Just that it's uh, a big part of it is just is managing the heat, uh, managing, learning how to work with the forge, learning how to. Ooh, that is hot. <laughs> learning how to um, uh, how much firewood, where to put it, where where it produces the best heat, all of that. So. You, the thing, it, it's so much more complex than working with a propane forge because that whole element's taken away from it. You just, you don't have to worry about it. It's, they're super fast and you put your metal in, you can see stuff. I spent 20 minutes digging around in the coals looking, you know, where I'd lost my little piece, you know, looking for it. And, and so that part of it uh, is very, um, very comp difficult. So I did, I didn't trust my mortise there. So I did put a little spot weld on the bottom. You can see like we did with the other one. I just, I'm not at the, the, the I should get my tongs. I'm not at the level where I can um, really, that I'm proficient to do that yet. Uh, and I was afraid it was gonna fall off. So, so that's it. So we got the, the beeswax on there. We'll, let, we'll just let that cool down. I, I am a little concerned that it's not deep enough for the toilet paper roll. Uh, I went ahead and finished it because if it's not, I, I did get a little faster on the end there. I'll show you close up when, we, uh, when it cools down. Uh, if not, I, I'll, we'll go in the wood shop and we'll make a little, a little square block, um, a little decorative block that's just a little bit bigger than that and that will take it out a little bit. It actually will look, would look really nice. So let's just let this cool off. Uh, 17 degrees, heating up the anvil I think helped. Things went better. I got a hole punched real quickly this time where last time it took me three heats. So there's little little per, little improvements that make a big difference. Um, having a proper anvil and a propane forge would go, would go a long ways. If I was gonna get serious with it, I would definitely do that. Uh, but for what's cool about the wood one is that in any situation, you know, end of the world, whatever you want to call it, were to happen, you'd be able to make holes in steel and manipulate steel, and I'll bet you'd get up to speed quick then, wouldn't you? Here's something else I learned. Don't melt wax on your anvil. <laughs> now I gotta clean that all up. That was not super smart. All right, so let's uh, center punch this really quick. Um, boy, a lot of room for improvement here. I guess we could take a look at it real quick. Um, so, yeah, I had to make a new piece. I was, I that uh, I was hoping to get a better connection right there. Um, I, I could, I think I could do it with a little bit more practice. I, as I said, I ended up just welding, just put a little tack on there, and then on that, uh, and then ground it down. But everything else I did, uh, the, I didn't leave myself probably enough, maybe quite enough material. I should have went a little extra. Um, I got all messed up on the end right there, and you know, kind of turned into a, what looks like a railroad spike on the top. Uh, but it kind of worked out. We kind of went with it and that will that should be enough lip to keep the toilet paper from coming off I guess my main concern is if it's gonna fit. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna fit in here um, It's the moment of truth. Did I make it <laughs> deep enough? I didn't check. You know what? I trust I just I just put it on I'm like I'm gonna trust that the Lord guided my hand like he does so many times and help me to to uh, make up for my deficiencies. So I, I think it's gonna fit. Here we go. We're gonna try it. Ready? Here's a full roll paper over the top of course and <laughs> it does fit. it fits it's not even touching it fits perfectly how about that <laughs> well that worked out pretty good uh actually you know what it's you know what blacksmithing is like it um it's like the creative process you've ever seen the uh 
I'll focus here. You ever seen the graph or creative process when you're doing something like, I have a great idea, it's gonna be amazing. And then as it goes along, you know, it's like, oh, it's bad. And then you get to the middle of it, you know, and you're working through it and it's like, I'm bad. Well, it's not so, I'm not so bad. It's not, you know, and it's okay. So, you know, it's this, it's this process that you go through. And the same thing happens, uh, let me turn the brightness up here a little bit. Same thing that happens uh, with this blacksmithing is you you start to look at it and you're taking it in and out and you're you'd hit it wrong and you think you're going to ruin something and then you just keep you keep at it and keep going and and usually well I'm I'm surprised at the outcome it, you know it's not as bad as you would have thought but I think it's I think it just turned out uh, really nice it's really charming I found a couple of screws that were similar to the ones that Granddad had uh, in his chest but having that little that little turn up right there is kind of cool because you you know to be able to change your toilet paper you don't have to you know it doesn't take have to you know do the spring deal and all that which I hate those things I I, I wanted something that was you could just slip on um, you know even a man is able to do that right ladies you know what I'm talking about but uh, I think it turned out great. It looks really nice uh, in here against the, the beadboard paneling. But uh, I've got no complaints and it. It ties in perfectly with this one here too, right there. So Mrs. W just came in and said, well, what about a towel bar? Could you make me something that was like that right here for the larger, you know, like for the bath towels? Well, that's, maybe we'll have to try that. But uh, every time we do it, we'll get a little bit better. But that, I, I like that one a lot. And this one here turned out I got my greasy paws on there. I think turned out uh, really nice, really pretty. You just can't buy something like that. I've got to guess it's part of my ensemble, my bathroom oh, suite you know ensemble. You saw me packing it around. What do you think? I love it. Can I tell you what my favorite thing about? Well, two favorite things. First, the fact that somebody was talking about how manly it is to blacksmith, and I called that cute. So that was one of my favorites. But the second favorite thing is, look how easy it is to replace the roll because that drives me crazy. So I this is wonderful. I didn't tell you this, but I just had the same conversation. I said it was easy enough even for a man. Oh yeah, and what did they say? They said, everybody wants to change the world, but nobody wants to change the, change the toilet <laughs> paper roll. <laughs> Isn't it's it true? So, it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's wonderful and it's not only cute, but it's also very manly. <laughs> oh, you think it's too masculine? No, I don't, I love it. Well, I hadn't thought about that. No, I, I think it's great. I love it. Well, I, th I think masculine is good. I love masculine, too. It'll go perfect with the floral flower cur or shower curtain. Well, we just have our things. <laughs> I see that right there. All right.